And we're here today for our weekly Monday morning coffee with Kyle and Ann, where we talk about Chicago real estate tips and tricks, how to sell your home, how to make buying and selling an enjoyable experience. Kyle, it's terrific to see you today. We have uh, something special this week, don't we? We certainly do. We have a very special guest, Sasha Mayoras, who's got a business, Space Coach Chicago. She also happens to be my sister. So if you notice a resemblance, there you go. But she is really one of the very top people in the organizing, downsizing business here in Chicago, helping people transform their homes and their lives by the work that she does. And we'll hear more, much more about it. But first we have the weekly stats. Yeah, so let's talk about stats. All right, so we've talked for the last three weeks about the same thing over and over again, about how the sales price is up and so forth. So today I thought I would show you something different. Today, uh, let's talk about the showing index. The showing index is foot traffic, how many people are going into homes. And it was way up in February here in Chicago. Look at that, 179.6. It was up 56% versus previous year. And while we were up a bunch, the rest of the region and the United States were up even more. So look at that, just huge. That's like over 150% almost of what it was on a typical year. Okay, so let's talk again. Now this is for all of Chicago and this form, sometimes people will send it out to their clients and I think it's just a little bit overkill because it's just so many numbers, but let me see if I can quickly break it down for you. In February of this year, all of the city of Chicago now, oh. new listings were down 35% and that in single family. In attached, they were up 5%. And then here's the other thing to know, if you look at it in terms of 12 months, new listings were down almost 21%. At the same time, sales prices went up. Yep. Now and look at Attach, though. So attach is up 10% for um, new listings. Right. Attach your condos, townhouses, things like that. Um, and detached your single family homes, yeah which not a surprise, you know, with COVID, people are leaving the condos, they're going to a single family home. So this is kind of what we were expecting to see. Wait, wait, go back for a second. Sure. Did that show um, that the median sales price is up, but the average sale price is down a smidge? Right, with condos. With condos, interesting. Not as much as the, um, people might've thought, but I think that, reflects what's going on in the center of the city, bringing down what's going on outside um, the center of the city. Okay. Yeah. So here we are in the near North neighborhood, which as you know, includes Gold Coast River, North Streeterville. And for this, I just pulled the attached and look at the change in inventory, the number of homes on the market up 41%. Then if you look at it over a 12 month period, it's still significantly up. It's up almost 14%. Now, closed sales down 20%. You're like 12 months. So this isn't just like one month. Oops. This is 12 months versus 12 months. And it's also resulting in price declines. Wait, wait, wait. But if you look at February, the closed sales are up 6.7% yeah. over February of last year. So people are starting to buy the trailing 12 months shows what happened this the summer and fall and all that, but it's, it's ticking up in February. That's a very good sign. Excellent point. Exactly. And there's a glimmer of hope that things are going to improve. The under contracts, excuse me for interrupting, almost 20% of under contract in February. That's a great sign. Yeah. For people in the Gold Coast and the Loop and the, and the yeah. South Loop. That's great. Excellent. Lincoln Park single family homes. Now we're not looking at lots of numbers here. They're up 50% from 20 to 30 in February. But if you look at it on a yearly basis, up 11% and prices are pretty steady. Although if you look at it in terms of average sales price, 4.9% up, you know, that what that really means is uh, the higher end properties are selling more. So the luxury business 
is really very, very strong at this point. And with Lakeview, you know, we've got a good balance of both single family home and attached. So I put them both in here for us to look at. Inventory is up 11% in the one month. But closed sales, look at that, up 37%. Wow. In the yeah. And then um, if you look at price, that's a good steady increase year that's over year, you know, both both in uh, median and average sales price. And then with condos, look at the condo prices in Lakeview. I mean, it's great. Very, very strong. Yeah. No, very it's strong. Very, very positive. Okay. So then I just wanted to throw this outlier neighborhood, because this is Saugenash, Forest Glen, Wildwood, um, and people really want to be there uh, because it's more of a suburban feel within the city, as you well know. Um, new listings are down because everything is sold. Yeah. Uh, you know, again, we haven't had as many listings, but look at the sales are way up and prices are up as well. So, that's the story, Morning Glory. It's a good story. It tells a great story. Excellent. Yeah. So, so we pull in our, um, our special guest star. Let's do it. Let me get her in here. Oh, wait a minute. Give me one second. Ah, uh, there she is. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hello good to see you, Josh. Good to see you guys. Thank you for talking to me. Thanks for joining us this early morning. At the crack morning. of dawn. Well, Sasha, I mean, <laughs> um, tell us a bit about your business. Tell us about Space Coach Chicago and what you do. I, well, I started the business about five years ago um, when I decided to take the age old advice to do what you love. And as weird as it sounds, and it does sound a little weird, I like to you know, I really do enjoy helping people to downsize, organize and simplify their lives. Like I really, I get a kick out of it. I'll do it for free. Um, you know, it's one of those things. She does it. She helps me out a lot. I, do. I, know. I do. No, that's terrific. So Sasha, uh, what services do you offer for people in terms of moving? What does a professional organizer do? Um, you know, it always varies by person, but I uh, will do almost anything, uh, to be perfectly frank. So I help all aspects of a move. If it's, if it's a traditional move, for moving from one um, apartment or house to another, I am most helpful if I'm brought in early in the process because, you know, before somebody's going to start packing, what I'd like to do, you know, it's optimal to uh, get rid of as much as possible, you know, um, to sort of weed through the stuff, kind of envision where life is going and um, what what you really do need and what you don't. You know, a lot of people just haven't thought about all that they have in their houses. So if I can save people um you know, wasting some money on moving stuff that they, you know, can't, won't fit in their house or just don't need anymore. That's what I'd like to do. So um, then I like to visit the new home with the clients and help them to determine, you know, like what goes where. We'll kind of lay out um, what their existing furniture is and see if it all fits. And if it doesn't, you know, that is a great way to determine um, what we should do. And either way, you know, that just starting early in the process is very helpful. I also um, recommend if clients don't want to pack themselves, I can, of course, pack for them. But often a moving company um, the moving company that they choose is the optimal labor for most packing um, because, you know, they're in, uh, insured uh, through that company and those packers can do it lickety split so that, you know, they're sort of not um, uh, their house is in chaos for a long period of time, you know, get it done fast. Um, I will, at that point, sort of previous to packing, take pictures of everything so I know where everything goes in their house, where they like to have everything, so I can make sure that it ends up on the other end of things uh, in the right places. Um, what about, then, wait, some, do you help people with the, who are selling an estate? 
Um, I sure do. I love to do estates, actually. I kind of consider it, you know, a lot of pe uh, people don't live where their maybe their parents live still. And um, we're also busy, you know, uh, working and taking care of our own families. So usually, you know, if, if somebody passes away, people can't necessarily quit their jobs and, you know, uh, put their children and family aside. So I like to act sort of as, as another child and go through the stuff, their things with a, a fine tooth comb, um, get uh, everything to the heirs that are um, inheriting things, and then monetize as much of the rest as I can um, and set the house up for staging um, for the real estate broker, work hand in hand with the real estate broker. Given my age, <laughs> a lot of my friends are wanting to downsize, but they say to me, I'm overwhelmed. I don't know where to even begin. Yeah. So sure, yeah. people like that, and how do you approach that? You know, you just break it down. Um, you, if, if it's so overwhelming, we just start where we start, just, you know, one uh, room, one closet, one drawer, you know, whatever is sort of a bite-sized thing that people can do. And, you know, it, it really adds momentum because you realize it's not as bad as you uh, thought it would be because you just start and it looks better. You feel better. You get rid of stuff, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, so what are some of the unexpected hurdles that people don't expect when they're, when they're doing this, that they face in any kind of downsize, even if it's not a move, but, a, but certainly a move. What are some of the unexpected for you, for us, but not for you? Well, um, or maybe for her, since she's yeah, in the world, but. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think it's for everyone, you know, it. uh, it is uh, often surprising to people that they've, uh, you know, they've bought uh, furniture and antiques or uh, things for their home and they expect to, you know, sell it for more than they bought, bought it for. And so um, when they realize what the market is, you know, right now it's mid-century modern, mid-century modern. And so um, they expect you know, if, if you don't have mid-century modern, but you have very fine French, you know, English furniture, uh, they expect to get the same amount out as they paid for it. And the market is depressed. And so I think you just have to let it go um, for all the right reasons, which, you know, versus put it into storage and wait 10 years for the market to come back and that sort of furniture. Um, or... I'll, uh, sometimes people learn that, you know, their um, s children don't want their things. And that's often very depressing um, or upsetting. But you know what? It's uh, it, no one should do anything out of guilt, you know, and, and they should have, you know, what, people want their own stuff and, and often by a, a certain age have their own stuff and, and don't want more stuff in their home. So those are sort of psychological hurdles. But the upside is that um, there are so many people in need these days that um, charities out there, they really do want your stuff. And there are people out there who will so benefit from, from the things that you donate. And so once uh, my clients hear what, you know, all the need out there um, and can target sort of where they give their things, you know, based on their, um, you know, I, I've had uh, some people are very into pets, and so we can give to PAWS or um, Anti-Cruelty Society. You know, you give your blankets there. They'll take, you know, lots of stuff that um, you wouldn't, you'd be surprised. So, or homeless people, you know, the, the, to get people off the streets, um, we can align giving by based on people's um, interests. Do you think, you know, in the last few years, we've heard like Marie Kondo's magic of tidying up and this, is it Huga, Huga, that movement, you know? Yes, is, yes. Are you seeing a big trend toward minimalist living with people? And is that part, you know, or yeah, do we all you know, want to do it and can't do it? <laughs> I, you know, it's so funny because it's, I think that a lot of people are interested in it. And, you know, it's because of Marie Kondo, um, people have started to talk about what, um, 
you know, downsizing, how much better they feel and lighter they feel with less. So it definitely is having a movement, you know, or a moment. Um, but, you know, there are a lot of people for whom, you know, their stuff is sort of um, a, a part of them. And so they're not, not everybody is on board. And I, you know, as opposed to there, there are actually organizers who do it in the Marie Kondo way, you know, so it's like you have like a, a very set standard that you have, which um, is an interesting, you know, path. Honoring it, you know. <laughs> what? Honoring the item. Right. Like, you know? <laughs> yeah. And for a lot of people that really works and, and it's terrific. But for other people, you know, I, the way I enter it is I'm not trying to impose my, the way I live on um, other people. I'm trying to understand where they want to go, sort of what their goals are, what, you know, what aspirations they have for, you know, why we're doing it. If, if it's to get them a new home and to sell this current home, you know, that's such a, a positive thing to hold on to and to create a space that will attract people that will increase you know, what they may be able to sell their apartment for, that really inspires me to get working. Yeah. yeah. So what, um, where would you advise people to like unload their books? So many people are shocked that nobody wants their books anymore. What, what do you do? How do you help them with books? You know, there are a lot of charities that still want books. Um, and so Open Books is one of them and Pilsen books, and they will come actually to your house and uh, pick up the books. So people are often surprised that somebody will come and you know pick up their books. The Newberry Library um, often has a sale and they um, each year, each summer, but obviously last summer they didn't do it. I don't know if they're gonna do it this summer, but um, there still are a lot of um, charities that want your books, so it, it it's easy. You just Google books and charity and lots will come up. What about clothes? What yeah. do you do with clothes? So I think there's such a wide range of clothes. Um, and so if, you know, you spend a lot on your clothes, the real real is really easy to work with. Um, they will sometimes come to your house and go through your closets and, you know, take what, uh, what you have or you, um, I, I love and have been using for 20 years Elliott consignment. They have two locations. That's sort of for the mid-range stuff. Um, and then what doesn't sell goes to charity, which, you know, I feel great about because it doesn't come back to my clients or to me, you know, that um, they'll take it all. And then um, Thread Up, my daughters shop through Thread Up. And um, you, you know, basically, you ship them your your clothes, and people buy them. And are, you know, it's really a popular movement because a lot of people really don't want fast fashion anymore, and want to make use of other people's clothes. Want to shop that way. So, excellent. How about kitchen items? Is, does that go to charity? What do you do with kitchen items? Kitchen items. So one of my favorite charities is um, the Chicago Furniture Mart. And what they do, they have a, um, a junk company. They call it a junk company, which I think is a misnomer because basically they'll take everything from your sofa to chemicals that you need to get rid of, like soup to nuts. They'll take everything from your home. And, you know, I'm, I don't know if, um, you guys have dealt with, say, Salvation Army or Goodwill, they'll only take very certain things. Um, like they won't take chemicals, they won't take um, furniture that isn't solid wood, they won't, you know, like, so the, it's difficult. Um, but the Honest Junk Company will take everything and um, they charge by what percentage of the truck that you uh, take up. Uh, so if you have lots and lots of furniture, you know, it'll cost more. However, 80% of the fee for the pickup is tax deductible and they send you a, um, a tax form so that you can also deduct what you gave them. So the furniture and, and things like the housewares and everything. And that benefits people who are formerly homeless, who have just received you know, new home and need to fill it. So it's a wonderful, wonderful charity and is very, um, it's expanding. 
And another thing that they do is, so if you have building supplies or arts and crafts stuff, they have a lot of charity partners that will, they'll then give to Habitat for the uh, Humanity, they'll give to other arts organizations and things like that. So it's like everything gets used that they pick up if it's humanly possible. Nice. Do, would you use them also for like out of out of date electronics or to those? Does that go sure, somewhere? you could. You absolutely could. Um, I have used so I often send my things back to Apple. The um, Samsung will let you uh, return various items, and you can um, get the next generation of item if you you know kind of send them your stuff. Best Buy has a very easy um, place to recycle your electronics. So there's, yeah, very, there are a lot of um, various uh, places out there to, to give them to. That we're getting so much smarter every day um, with, you know, where to give stuff. The city of Chicago also has a place where you can give chemicals or electronics and things like that. Excellent. Well, um, let's bring this back a little bit to real estate. And I've got, um, some case studies. Of, so first of all, I started to look at for pictures where people were um, listings did not declutter. Oh, look at that. Um, and then I uh, decided to um, do one where we do where because uh, first of all, I did, first of all, I, I'm going to start again, people. I looked at listings that sold fast mm -hmm. within 30 days when under contract, they're still under contract, not closed. 30 days um, and, or less and um, looked for pictures with um, that hadn't been decluttered of properties that hadn't been decluttered. I didn't find any in the um, near North uh, Lakeview or Lincoln Park area. All were beautiful pictures. All had been had gone through professional decluttering. All the ones that sold fast. We don't know what their sales prices are, but my guess is they'll do very well compared to their list price. Then I looked at and tried to find anything that would show what they look. So I'm going to show, and I'd like your thoughts, Sasha, on um, how do I make this move? Um, these are two examples, two different examples of um, kitchens. It's, so this is what you do, right, Sasha? Yep. So, we're, you know, the goal would be to sort of eliminate um, as much as possible that says, like, this is Sasha's kitchen. You know, it's like it wants you want to convey that it, it, it you could picture yourself or the buyer can picture themselves in the kitchen. And these are both tiny kitchens and appear large and uh, with generous um, storage, you know, if you don't see a lot on the counters and stuff like that, you make the assumption that there is a lot of storage. Um, and so that's a positive for most buyers. And I also only chose properties that looked like they were still lived in. So that was in choosing this. So examples. Right. This looks look lived in. Um, and there it's very neat. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff, I think, uh, I might eliminate some of the stuff in on the left hand side if I could, but you know, if huh? The laundry room? The yeah. laundry room. I might just you know, it's a little busy. It's a little yeah. busy. But, but it shows um, you put, put a lot of stuff in there and yet it looks organized. Oh, it's definitely organized. They did a very nice job. Very nice, yes. And I never doesn't had, want the pantry. Who doesn't want the pantry? Bedrooms. Yeah, those are great kid rooms. I mean, I aspire to uh, to have my daughters keep their rooms like that, um, but it's imperative if you want to have, um, you know, good photographs where, um, you know, people can picture where their furniture will go and that kind of stuff. I mean, the one on the right doesn't appear to be a huge room, but you can tell you can get two kids in there and um, make you make good use of the space or high ceilings and stuff like that. And on the left, well, you know, it's, still there. Yeah, and all the stuff. Yeah, there's stuff. They've got stuff. Yeah. yeah. They're not um, Marie, Marie Kondo'd up. Uh, yeah, um, and here's more kids' rooms. You know, there are people who are like, I can't make my kid do, a, you know, I can't make them live in a neat room. It's for pictures. They still have their stuff. Look. Yeah. 
well. It's I true. personally yeah. like seeing some things neatly aligned, but seeing things in rooms, if they're too sterile, then you almost think that things don't fit. I mean, don't you think both of you that sometimes having the extra chair and the accessories makes a room have personality and makes it yes. look like stuff might actually fit in there. Truly, truly. I, th I like, I like a room that looks like somebody real is in there myself. Yeah. yeah. And here's two examples of home offices. Tiny yeah, those are really nice. Yeah, you know, but they do have books. Like uh, they do have uh, stuff on the desks and, and things like that. It's perfectly mm -hmm. acceptable. People expect that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and a baby's room. People are like, oh, make it look bright, tidy it up. It can be yeah. done. I Those love these nice. neutral ladies' rooms too. I think that's, that's really great. So what'd you say? I like the fact that they're neutral colors here, you know, and. Oh, neutral. that's a very good point. Um, a very good point, that neutral colors, it, they do expand the space. Well, and also the next person who moves in doesn't have to paint it right. something else. You know, that's, you've sort of made it acceptable to the next person who might not have a baby. Right. Oh, Ooh. I love that garage. Oh, do I love that garage. I aspire so, to a garage like that. So, for example, I just had a listing that sold after one showing um, that uh, I took a picture of it with two SUVs in it. And I said, it's a two SUV a garage. And I got to tell you, I think that made people go. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. So this is all doable. That's all I got. Those are great. Yeah. No, that's terrific. Yeah. 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 And I'm going to say Sasha, um, we sold her house and she staged it beautifully. It photographed beautifully. And your daughters did clean up and it looked, they were, their <laughs> rooms were very well. They showed beautifully in those pictures. I held a gun to their heads. Yes. yes. Yeah. Congratulations. And sometimes I tip. Hold a gun to someone's so, head. Sasha. If somebody wants to uh, get started with this process or they think it might help them, how do you talk to them for the first time and how do they get in touch with you? So, um, you know, I'm only one person, but to find an organizer um, in Chicago or anywhere actually in the country, you can go to the NAPO website, which is the National Associ Association, easy for me to say, uh, organizing professionals. So it's napo.net. And um, you can fill in your zip code um, and uh, what you want the organizer to help you with. Like some organizers can help you, people who have ADD, some people can hoarding issues, you know, like all, all across the board or um, moving, um, you know, maybe their specialty. So that's the best. Uh, my tip for uh, finding an organizer to help. And um, for me, you would just go to spacecoachchicago.com and that's my site. But, um, you know, I, I, there are lots and lots of great professionals out there to help uh, with all the whole process of moving. It doesn't have to be scary. No. And you make it really easy as somebody who often gets reorganized by her sister. <laughs> I like to practice on you. Yeah. So thank you for co joining us. We're coming to the end thank of our show. You. It was a pleasure. And Anne, thank you. So um, we always are looking for um, comments, questions, send us questions. I got a lot of questions last week um, about inventory. What are we doing to get more inventory, et cetera. And we'll be talking about those topics and more on our next show. Sounds wonderful. Thank you everybody for watching. We look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks again, Thank Sasha. You. Thanks. Anne.